The Earth's oceans are running a fever, and that includes these waters off of BC's coast. Right now, there's a huge expanse of warm water in the Pacific Ocean, where surface temperatures are up to 5 degrees above normal. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is classifying this ocean heat wave as extreme. It started growing back in May around 1,600 kilometers offshore, but over the past few weeks, winds have pushed that warm water mass towards us. Here's what's happening. It's normal for the ocean's temperature to fluctuate, but extreme heat waves like this are becoming more frequent as our climate changes. Warming in the Pacific happens when summer temperatures spike, the normally high winds then weaken, and the top layer of the ocean, which normally easily mixes with the cooler water underneath, becomes thinner. That thin, mixed layer then heats up more easily from the sun, and a marine heat wave is born. But there are also other contributing factors we're only just learning about that show just how complex a place the ocean is. In 2020, the UN made cargo ships start phasing out the use of really high sulfur fuels, uh, which produce a lot of sulfur dioxide. Now, that's great, and the UN was trying to reduce cases of asthma, uh, reduce the amount of acid rain being caused uh, in a lot of places where they have a lot of cargo ships, but it had the unintentional side effect of reducing cloud cover in a lot of these places. Uh, cargo ships when they release sulfur dioxide, sulfur dioxide goes into the atmosphere and can allow water vapor to condense around it, causing these really bright, really reflective clouds called ship tracks. And ship tracks are very characteristic. If you look at a photo of them, they're very easy to identify. And what that was doing is in places with a lot of cargo ship traffic, all those clouds were causing a lot more light to be reflected into space than normally would with the normal amount of cloud cover. By reducing the amount of sulfur dioxide emitted by those ships, the UN accidentally reduced that cloud cover, and now more light is hitting the oceans and more heat is being absorbed, meaning that the North Atlantic has now experienced a heat wave causing the temperatures to spike pretty much where we'd expect them to be, if not higher, as a result of climate change. So that slowdown in cooling and heating we were seeing is no more. The Pacific isn't the only ocean experiencing a marine heat wave. Parts of the North Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico have also been warmer than usual. The waters off Florida even reached 37 degrees. That's about the temperature of a hot tub. These heat waves become more dangerous when the warm waters approach our coastlines. And scientists are worried about just what effect it could have on the species who are used to living here in these usually chillier waters, affecting everything from shellfish to kelp, salmon, and even killer whales. Um, first of all, warmer water tends to have a lot less oxygen in it than cold water. So your basic productivity is decreased, and that means a lot of the primary food substances for a lot of the animals that our animals, like marine mammals, depend on start to decrease in abundance. So that could be that could have issues for anything right up to the big whales. And secondly, what can happen is that novel species can come uh, further north and novel species can bring um, pathogens that our uh, resident animals might not be used to, so viruses, bacteria, fungus, that sort of things might be introduced to our animals. Our animals might be naive to those diseases and have sort of a, a bigger effect on that population of those animals. With climate change, uh, these heat waves uh, will become uh, more frequent and more intense uh, in the future. So, um, so what we are seeing now uh, with the heat wave and the impact uh, provide a window of what we may see uh, in the future uh, that is more frequently and may even become a, a, a normal conditions uh, in the near future. A big unknown for this Pacific heat wave is what will happen if this turns out to be an El Nino year as expected. El Nino is a reoccurring complex weather pattern that generally brings warmer temperatures to the Pacific. You may remember back in 2014 when those conditions led to the blob that closed fisheries and resulted in harmful algae. And scientists say there's a 90% chance this could be an El Nino year, and that could prolong this ocean heat wave. All of this is important because marine heat waves can fuel extreme weather, contribute to rising sea levels, and lead to faster melting of ice caps. The temperature of the waters that surround us and supports all life on Earth will be felt across ecosystems and in our lives.